Hi everyone, this is Dave from Unplug Woodworking and today I'm back with another installment of how to use these guys. Um, for anyone that's interested, there is a free ebook. I did, I was going to sell it, but I changed my mind that it's, it's free to everyone. So if you want to download it, download it and then feel free to share it. So I'm going to cover a few things today, a little, a little few things I've been doing lately and maybe some of the body mechanics because there seems to be a little bit of a, um, a struggle with people that work on tall benches, they're kind of struggling to work on the low benches just because they're not, not aware of some of the body mechanics and such so I'm going to go over a few things today. <clears throat> so this is the notch attachment. Um, I wrote about this in the book again if you if you want the book it's free download it so this is just basically two pieces of wood it's just an L shape so it's all it does the L shape it actually gives it strength when it's in the notch so you could just put a piece of wood in here to do things what I'm going to show you but the trouble with that is that you do get the top the higher you get you get vibration you will get movement in the, in the in the piece that you saw and so this is slightly better it's really simple to make um it also tackles the problem it's not a problem it's just a, maybe a little bit of a misconception people think that you've got to have a vice on these things and you really don't the vice is not necessary on these benches i personally feel it takes away uh, from the simplicity i just really don't think you need a vice on one of these if you want to put one on put one on but you don't need to put one on so i'm saying people putting vices like round about here um so i'm i'm, I'm even seeing people putting vices here and using it to plain pieces of wood so if you're planing pieces of wood like that you, you're missing the concept of the of the pegs uh, the peg system for every for anyone that's a little unsure go and check out the other video will be a the link somewhere here yeah go and check it out it's uh, part two of how how the Roman workbench uh, works and i basically show you how to do that i will show you a little bit today as well there is a couple of things i want to show you today about that so how does this work this is really super simple but how we get this set up it's really really simple I'm going to get the piece of wood uh, that I'm going to be using. This is just a scrap piece of wood. Um, this could be maybe a rail, maybe you're cutting some tenon joints, you want to cut them in the vertical position. That's more common for um, tall benches. So is what you would do, you would put your piece in and you would just sandwich it. Um, you get it with the right height. I mean, obviously, if I wanted to, I could take this like really high up or i could take it um, a bit lower that's just dependent on the size of the the wood you, you're using or the length of the wood so for me i can pretty much you know keep it pretty low so what i'll do I'll just put the wedge in and make sure it's it's got a good bait so that that will sandwich it quite well but obviously it can still it can still move so another thing about having this this l shape if you will it stops a piece from turning out which can be an issue if you're just using um one section of wood where you can't do it like like when it's an l shape it just won't happen so once we've once we've got this in the position we want we can use the peg and a wedge again and that's it in the position and if we were cutting the tenons, we were kind of good to go, so... So, 
if you notice the the body position as well I find it very comfortable to have one day on and one day off rather than standing which which I think is a benefit um, to a low bench because obviously you wouldn't be doing this on a tall bench having said that on a tall bench you'd probably have the piece facing maybe that way but as it is it's facing this way and what else I like about this is I don't have to I don't have to alter it where you you typically wouldn't advise so if it wasn't a vice you may you may use the saw on a diagonal and then you would turn it and do a diagonal again and then you would you would come in from the center but with this I can just go around the other side As you can see that's that that ain't going anywhere and it's it's really simple so and that's it out and that's how quick you can take it out and obviously you've seen how quick it is to set up so with that I've actually resawn boards at about 200 millimeters, 170 millimeters in that region. That works quite well for that as well. So something I forgot to mention when this was in the notch is that it's really good for um, end grain planing. If I had maybe the, uh, two or three boards glued together, which is quite common for me, um, if I was to be making uh, dovetail blanket chest um, same again you know that's gonna that's gonna hold it I think if it was gonna be about three boards I don't even think I would have to wedge that up um, obviously this would be wedged up but this would be holding the piece um, I haven't had a chance to fully try that out um, but I think it's gonna work really well um, just with the, the few little experiments I have done beforehand so that's something else that that's going to come really uh, going to come in handy for another thing i haven't had a great deal of time to experiment with it and I, to be honest i don't think i'll pursue this but for other people it might be um, beneficial for them to explore this so i've got two hole fasts here and if i was just to line that up with the edge of the bench and fix fix the, the accessory down I've actually got like a bit of a wide face here and what I could do same again if I had like three or four boards uh, sorry two or three boards um, you know uh, glued together and I was you know doing uh, multiple dovetails is what I could do would be to would be to fix it into place now that's that's kind of like a makeshift moxing vice I do do the same thing but I use my toolbox to do this but you know, since I've I've got a share, I thought I'd mention it. You know, it's, it's the same again. These do work. It does work pretty well. This does actually work a little bit better uh, if you're using it this side and you you're operating this side with a Japanese saw. It does anyway. You can see it's it's not great, but it will allow you to do stuff, which is the whole point of the bench and everything I'm showing you and telling you. Is basically, there's quite a lot of things that are possible. 
something I'm starting to do more and more is just use um, obviously three pegs and a bench dog um, I'm not using the wedge a lot uh, this is more for planing than anything else so in part two of how the Roman workbench works I briefly showed you how to how to do this or how I was doing it so basically I was having these two um, pegs in I was putting the piece in like so and I was actually bending the back piece and I was inserting the peg into the, the back side so that's how I was doing it for a while and sometimes I still do it like that but what I'm finding myself doing more and more now is these two pegs, these two pegs do not move now which they normally wouldn't do anyway I put that in and I'm just putting the wedge here, yeah, not the wedge, the peg straight in so what makes this work is the fact that it is actually tapered there is quite a noticeable tape on this, on this one peg this, <laughs> this was actually a mistake quite some time ago but the peg still works so I still used it I think I've had this peg for maybe oh, I don't know maybe two for a year something like that um, but as I said this was a pure mistake and it was a bit of a mistake kind of how I found this out as well so when I'm putting it in I push it down and as I push it down with it being tapered it starts to it starts to wedge up so if it's there you can see there's quite a lot of movement movements less it's less and it gets less again the further I push it down so this works really well but if you are using a softwood like a European redwood or some spruce anything soft like that the pegs probably will leave an indentation so you might not be able to do it because of that alternatively you could put some back in, um, you know, use some scrap wood, a sacrificial piece of uh, wood, you know, you could use that for quite some time before you would have to replace it. That is another option. Um, another thing to note as well is that this will only, this like, this setup will only work um, on nominal sizes of timber that you're using because obviously you will have it in place for those sizes. So for me, I've said this quite a few times, it's quite common for me to use 21 millimeters um, in thickness material. Um, so this works out really well for me. So on this particular bench, I've got it set up where I can use it for um, 21 millimeters, 25 millimeters, and around about 48 millimeters that's like the nominal size is what you would get if you were getting some um nine by two um it, it is actually a little bit smaller i think it's like something like 48 but this bench will actually cope with those three sizes so i could repeatedly do things with that and not have to use a wedge obviously if i'm using like a, like a lot of different sizes all the time i would just go for the uh, go for the wedge I, I wouldn't be able to do this i don't think but as it stands because i'm using those nominal sizes particularly the 21 uh, millimeter thickness i am able to do this sort of setup one of the issues with these type of benches rather the benches that i've been making is the thickness um when you make them this this thin they tend to not have a great deal of weight but that's the whole purpose of me building them like this so I can basically go into my shed pick this up and take it land into the garden or on the deck where I am now so with that when you are using them on the legs of the deck and they will have a tendency to slide so one of the things I've I've been doing for a while I've never mentioned it before I really didn't see the importance but um, I thought I'd mention it now I'll actually use me back foot uh, to put against one of the legs this works particularly well in the likes of 
like this bench. I think this bench is, is just about five foot long. So that works quite well with this bench. Obviously, if you've got um, longer benches, it's not going to be as good. Um, something I was thinking about uh, not so long ago, I actually seen a, a photograph of one of uh, Chris Schwartz's um, benches that he made, um, a low bench, and it's it's pretty famous if, if you know what a low uh, a Roman weight bench is, you'll, you, you probably would have seen the picture, but the bench has eight legs, so I kind of wondered, you know, did people use it the same way I'm going to show you now, so what I'll tend to do, the back leg here, I'll actually use my foot, put my foot against it like so, I'll actually have quite a, quite a large stance, so this will actually stop this from moving, I want to try and get the bench to move first, see if I can, so I did actually get it to move there quite easily. So if you put your leg there, your foot roller, that does actually solve the problem. Um, it does actually help you to get down into a lower position as well. This is this is quite an easy stance for me. I have got pretty strong legs. Some of you may not. You, know, you may have bad knees, but it may come in handy for you to have this information. Another solution, if your bench is moving and you're unable to get your foot to the back, or you're unable to sit on the bench or kneel on the bench, you don't feel comfortable. Another thing I like to do is actually put a, a yoga mat down. A yoga mat works really well to stop it from sliding. So, as I said, this is just a, a, an old yoga mat. pick a yoga mat up maybe like 10 pound ish so if you are using it on a small surface or you've got issues with this like movement something like that's gonna it's gonna help a lot it also helps to deaden the sound if you if you're mortising you know you're using chisels it does help to deaden the sound you know if, like if noise for the neighbors is going to be an issue and such So something else I'll show you what I don't think I've shown before, I don't think, um, is me actually playing in when I'm sitting um, on top of the bench. I will admit typically I do use when I'm playing on top of the bench maybe somewhere around 80 to a, to 100 say, millimeters. I don't really tend to do it like this, although on a shorter piece I may actually do it. But... So, as you can see, it's actually lifting. Um, so, that just basically means this isn't big enough. So, is what you would do there, is put something in big enough. that solves the problem with that so that's it for today um, let us know what you want to see because I'm kind of <laughs> running out of ideas what to show you on here you know I'm just kind of showing you what I do if there's any tasks that you'd like to see um, let us know leave a comment um, don't forget to share the video if you want to share it of course um, till the next time I'll see you guys later